our Heavenly Father, Creator of all things. Father, you are holy, righteous, glorious, and almighty. We give you all the honor, glory, and praise. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Are you in the right place in your life? Are you happy? Are you satisfied? The book of John chapter 10 verse, verses 3 through 4 says, To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Are we followers of Jesus? Are we his sheep? Are we listening to his voice? To lead us, to guide us, to instruct us. In our lives. In the book of Psalm, chapter 25, verses 4 through 5, David says, Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. On you I wait all the day. Are we asking God to teach us his paths, the way that we should go? Are we letting God lead us, teaching us the truth, our our ears open, waiting to hear? Are we in prayer, listening and praying and listening, talking and listening? To what God is saying. For he is our salvation. For the sake of informity and explanation. These verses are being read by the New King James Version. Any version that you will read from. Or you're writing or taking notes. It's all, all good. James chapter 1 verse 5 through 6. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. If anyone lacks wisdom, we must go to God and ask God for wisdom. He gives it to us liberally, without reproach. Liberally, all we have to do is ask and it will be given. But you must have that faith. You must ask in faith without doubting. Because if you doubt, you're like a wave in the sea, driven and tossed in the wind. I'm reading these scriptures because I hear so many people say that they're serving God. And it's a sacrifice. We're sacrificing. We could be doing this. We could be doing that. And I'm tired. I'm tired. I hear so much of that. Pastors, bishops, they're tired, they're sacrificing. They're sacrificing. Is the word of God a sacrifice? Is it for the good? Psalm chapter 31 verse 3. For you are my rock and my fortress. This is David. Therefore, for your name's sake, he's asking God. Lead me and guide me. 
Have we went to God in prayer and asked to be led to be led in our lives to be guided? Are we on the right path? The book of Psalm chapter 32 verse 8 through 9 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like the horse or like the mule, which have no understanding, which must be harnessed with bit and bridle, else they will not come near you. Let God do the instructing and the teaching in the way, in the way that you should go. He'll guide you with his eye. Don't be like the mule. Don't be stubborn. Don't let yourself be harnessed and whipped and have to be guided that way. God will guide and instruct you. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, everyone who asks receives. And he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be open. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 through 8. Ask God for what it is you need. Ask God for direction. Ask God for guidance. If you're not feeling it within yourself that where you are is not where you supposed, you're supposed to be. If you're not feeling it. If you're in church, some of these pastors, they're in church six and seven days a week. Phones are, are answering and things and, and they're on the podium. A couple times a week and everything. Share the stage. Share. Share the leaders. Get together as leaders. And, and, and come to common ground and learn from each other and help the people. In all different different ways and, and, and everyone is different and everyone can bring flavor. Flavor to the ministry. And that way it frees up just one person being burdened down. Come together. Come together. We must come together. Because the word of God, doing the word of God shouldn't be a burden. Doing the word of God should not be, oh, I, this is just a, a, a burdensome sacrifice. It should not be that. However, whatever you're doing in the Lord, if, if he hasn't guided you, then you're going to be exhausted. You're going to be, it's something that you're doing in your life that's, that's exhaustive, that's not right. And sometimes... You may have to step back and just take a look. Sometimes, sometimes, pastors, you may have to step back and and, and let a couple more pastors come and take that podium. Sometimes, and you're all in agreement, and you all had meetings and discussions, sometimes you got to share that stage. Sometimes you got to share that church. And open those doors. Open those offices. For one person six to seven days a week. Doing this, this and that on their own with little to no help is a lot. Is a lot. And God says come to me all who are heavy laden and I will give you rest. But is this the direction? Is this the way? That God is telling you to go. And sometimes God is just not a one way street. There are times when it's time to move on somewhere else. Or, 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 or elevate or escalate somewhere else. In another part of the ministry. Or step back. There's just not just this is what you are forever and ever. Our God is a creator. Almighty Jehovah God. Would one way he may see another way right now that this is the best way right now. Yes, this was the best way at this time, but now it's time to do something else. 
There have been times in the Bible where God instructed one thing and when they got there it was something else. Because sometimes God is just not a one, just a one track mind, just one way. No. Things happen, things change, God is forever creating. So never be just stuck on just one way. Just one way, this is it, and I'm so bogged down. And sometimes we can be so involved in other activities. We're working for God. We're doing all of, all of this for God, our brothers and sisters, and we're serving, and we're serving. How many hours are we doing that? And how many hours are we actually sitting down and having to talk with God and praying with God? Are we putting more into the serving, serving, serving? And just getting up in the morning, oh God, oh Father, 10, 15 minutes, thank you for the day, I love you, and everything like that? And before we go to bed, sometimes we're so tired that we forget to pray and we, we wake up in the middle of the night and say a prayer. Or, or, or are we just praying that, that early that morning for a couple minutes and, and, and getting up in the middle of just going out and just doing and doing and doing and exhausting? That's just like your, 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 your parents. Just, just say you had parents that, that, you were growing up when you were growing up and they will work and they would work and they provide you with with beautiful things. You had a beautiful home, beautiful clothes. You were never hungry and you had everything you wanted. Holidays would come. You'd have the beautiful Christmas toys and everything. But mom and dad, you were always at the babysitters or the babysitters over your house. Mom and dad was always working, working, working. And saying, you know, I'm doing this for you so that you can have a better life. But sometimes, brothers and sisters, sometimes. And if we were in those situations and cases, then something you just want your mom or you want your dad right there. You don't care about the fancy clothes. You don't care about all the, the fancy food, the home. You don't even know about the gas and the light bill or the telephone. But you don't even know. All you want sometimes is to just sit there with mom and dad. None of that matters. And that's the same way with God. We run and do, we have to do this for the church. We got to serve. We got to help the children. We got to, this event, that event, this event. We're doing it for the will of the Lord. And God is saying, that's fine, that's good, that's wonderful, but what about me? What about that personal personal relationship with me? How many hours have you had just with me? Yes, love me with all your heart, mind, body, soul, everything. And then love your neighbor as yourself, as your brothers and sisters, everybody you come in contact with. Everybody. But what about my personal time? What about me? And, and and have you consulted me? Is this what I want you to do? Is this what I want you to do to, to, to be on burnout mode? Is this what I want you to do? It's wonderful. You, you, you love me. It's wonderful. You're doing the will. It's wonderful. But are you, have, you, uh, have you reevaluated yourself? Have you came to me for reevaluation? Because you're tired, you're weary, you're worn out. There may be another way. You may be doing a children's ministry and everything you love children, but you're here all basically for the rest of your life every single day. But you're worn out. Is this the way to go? Are your talents being portrayed? And if they are, then ask God what's wrong and what's going on. Because you're not supposed to be just so burdened down. So burdened down. I wake up every day. I wake up every day happy. I wake up every day looking forward to, to, to God just guiding me and bringing God right along with me, blessing my business and just leading me actively. It's a beautiful thing. I get sleepy, yeah, but sometimes I have to make myself go to sleep because <laughs> I'm so happy. 
And I'm just so just just up.